So yesterday we touched some few things, okay? We touched how to carry your violin, we touched how to hold your bow. I gave a few exercises you should do to help bring your and violin carry. Sorry, I will mute. Okay, let me mute you. Sorry, I would like you all not to give me stress. Always be sure your mic is off, okay? Always be sure your mic is off. Whenever you are joining the class, review your um review your mic review your video if you want me to be seeing you fine if you don't want me to be seeing you fine but always review those two things and make sure you are even if your video is on no problem but if your audio is on it's going to like interrupt me so that being said um i stopped at word um how to like play um carry your violin and i gave you some exercise which the first time Yes, I'm seeing myself hanging on my screen here. Somebody should confirm I'm not hanging. So your screen is, uh, your sound is breaking. My sound is breaking. Who else confirming that, please? We are good now. We are good now. Sorry. And, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not clear. Hello, can you hear me now? Loud and clear, sir. Loud and clear, okay. Yes, sir. I had to leave. I had to leave this time so that um, my network won't be too, uh, we won't be having too much All right. So the first thing you do is how to carry your violin. And I also say um, the way you can do that is remember this bone on your thumb, it should be like behind, not under, behind. Somewhere here, somewhere here. Okay, don't mind the way the hand is, I'm just turning my violin. So you see how it is like this, up. Not too much like this, not like this, not like this, not like this, but like this. So the bone is what is supporting it, right? That being said, I also taught people how to, normally I'll always be doing this, I'll be reviewing what we did in the other class. And I hope most of you carried out all those exercises. I taught people that your hand needs to be straight, and your first finger, how to make that work very well. Your first finger on your G, second finger on your D, third finger on your A, and fourth finger on your E. And I asked you to try doing a slide. And one of the things I asked you not to do is adding too much pressure. I asked you not to add too much pressure. So if you are not adding pressure, it's just moving your hand forward and backward. Hold on, please. Okay, one minute. Just give me a minute. All right, so as I was saying, being able to move your hand forward and backward. So free from, sorry about those sounds you're hearing on the background. There are lots of people here, so I just took one of the rooms. So being able to move your hand freely forward and backward, I asked you to do this like 10 to 20 times. So up and down is one, up and down is two, up and down is three, up and down is four. You keep doing that in like 10. And you may be feeling tension in your hand, fine, but don't worry about that. And I also told you that your violin should be straight like this, not up, not down, not down. Instead, it is better you stand your violin a bit forward like this why your face is straight, so you can be using your side eye to look at your violin. I also stated that. Then um, I also told you people that you can also do a longer stretch. But when you are doing a longer stretch, your elbow needs to come out. All these things, you have to note them. Your elbow needs to come out. Then you do that stretch while your thumb changes position from here to probably anywhere around here, depending on how long your finger is. Okay, so me, for me, I can stop here and my finger will get to the end. Some people that have very short hands, their hands sometimes even need to come here for them to get to that point, and they have to start sliding back to come to this point so that the first finger will come and meet the thumb. And I always, I told you also that, I told you that the um, thumb is always behind the first finger, your index finger, okay? So immediately your thumb, your first finger. So anytime you're sliding, make sure Hence, it get to this point. It won't go um, like it won't go to um, backward. It won't go backward. Sorry, I almost said backward than this. 
I always say backward. So you won't go this back, like this backwards. So just somewhere here, then you start sliding till you get to that point. Sorry, I'm going to be a bit distracted in this slide, but you push, just bear with me. Like I said, we are in a movie set, so a whole lot of people are here with us. So they're just coming into the room and going out. All right, that being said, um, as I was saying, that stretch, and I told you when you're doing the stretch, your arm should go out a bit, and you should, um, your thumb can even move, like I said, and so that you'll get that, then when you do that, you push forward and backward. So when you do this, up and up is one up and down is to let me go back a bit so that you see me so you see when i'm when i'm going this way you see my able is forward so that i can achieve that if my able is like this it's going to be very stressful for me so i push out my able so if you can do this automatically you can carry your violin on your shoulder and your chin rest i mean your chin rather so that means that which other thing we talked about um how to hold your bow i'm just doing like a retrace so that nobody will be confused for those that are just joining today that missed the class. Um, so we also talked about how to hold the bow and I um, made us to understand that for you to get um, the bow hold easily is just with three major steps. And I said that you mark it with this, your line, the first line you're seeing on your thumb, on your index finger, and maybe this one. So for me, this is the major. So if you can keep it straight like this, then we are good. And I said the best way you can, or the easiest way you can teach anybody is asking them to hold their um, bow with their left hand as they are holding that as the screw with their left hand and the hair should be up when they turn it like this. So with this, you can start fixing your hand. And I said the first step is you pin this one. So we are pinning only two fingers. You pin your thumb and you pin your pinky, all right? So you pin your thumb here. This is the part where you pin your thumb. Let me, where's my camera? This is the part where you pin your thumb. So it's more like your thumb is just at the top of this, the edge of this frog, not inside. You're not putting it inside, just at the edge. Okay, when you see that sharp edge, that is where it's supposed to be. So um, you just place your thumb there. So your thumb should be straight and not curved like this. Okay, straight there then you look for that line I told you and place your three fingers down. So this is the second step. First step, thumb. Second step, fingers. And the fourth step is putting this one. Pinky. So you see, the first finger is touching the silver, the second finger is touching the um, uh, thumb leather where the, um, where the um, this thing is, where the thumb is, okay? So the middle finger and the thumb are almost the same place. Then we have this one, which is your third finger, your ring finger, touching um, the frog. Then we have, sorry for the sound, at my background, we have your pinky pinning. So you are not stretching your pinky, please. You are just, it should be curved like this. So we have two fingers that are curved, which is this. And so when you are able to hold it like this, if you keep it like this, you observe that all your fingers are what? pointing down and that is exactly how your hand needs to be so we've established holding the bow carrying the violin and i also give people some exercise that you can do i said you should be able to like bow on each of the strings without touching the other and i said for beginners what you have to do is to start with short bow and i told you the bow is divided into three so i'm just retracing based on those who are just joining i told you the bow is divided into three the tip the middle and the bottom part. And I say, try to use the middle first. Go up and down, up and down, up and down on each of the string, maybe four, four times, up, down, up, down. So you don't do it very short. You have to move your hand, okay? When you're going, you don't, you don't go this short. You don't go this short, like, you have to move, okay? So that being said, um, you do that four, four times each on each of the strings. So can come in, come in, please. All right, so you do that four, four times on each of the strings, short, 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 short. Now, this will help you 
to be able to know the distance between one string to the other, okay? To help you to know the distance between one string to the other. But if you do full bowing as a beginner for the main time, it's going to be a struggle for you because you'll find out that you're touching other strings by mistake continuously. Okay? So you find out that you're touching so many strings, like if you're playing on your D, you'll be touching your A or your G and all those things. So we need to really avoid that. So when you are done playing short, 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 and you are good with the short, you can now start extending from the beginning of your bow to the very end. And I told you, you make two movements when you are bowing. Your able moves and stop, then your arm starts opening. Okay? So that being said, we'll be touching more on bowing today. And I'm going to talk about... Um, I'm going to talk about how to tune our instruments here because a lot of people would really need to know how to tune their instruments. And I would have loved to use my phone. That was why I connected with my laptop. But for the fact that people were not hearing me well, as people were not hearing me well, so I just decided to say, okay, instead of that, let me use my phone. So I'm thinking of either creating a video that would explain that. But for those that have downloaded that app, if you watch, there was a way I navigated and I took us to violin instead of guitar because when you open it, the first instrument you're going to see is your guitar. So you have to go to the settings and change from guitar to violin. So with that, you can tune your violin, okay? So that being said, the sound of your violin should sound exactly like the alphabets that are there, okay? So like I said, the first string is your G. Always remember, second string is your D. A and your E. And normally I, I, I normally play some game with students. I play games with my students. Like if I, if you have just started. Okay, so this is G, B, A. G, B. E, follow G, you can sing with me, A and E, G, you can also plug A and E, G, B, e, A. A, E, so when you, you are now conversant with all the names, you can start striking different, if you have any, any person around, you can ask them to strike each string. So let me just strike, and you would call it unknown. Somebody is raising his hand. Who is that? Oh, network is unstable. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can, can, be can you hear me? Confirm. Can you guys can hear me? me? Someone is saying the network is unstable. We did not hear what you said. Talk to me. I need somebody to talk to me. Ah. Yes, we can hear you. What is happening? Your is Hello, can you guys hear me? Sir, we did not hear what you said. Wow. Yes. Can you now, Your video is again now. We are not even seeing. We can't see you and your um the video is hanging. You are not sure. It's in his hanging. I had to leave and come back. Confirm, please. Somebody should confirm if they can hear me. Yes. 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 Please, everybody, drop your. I've lost all the messages. Drop back your names on the attendance list. Let's just use two minutes. Everybody, drop your name on the attendance list. Like, 
type your name on the chat box. I have you you and me. Isabella, your mic is on. Isabella, your mic is on. Everybody, drop your name back on the desk so I can start. Somebody should tell me where you people stop hearing me. Stop from Somebody should tell me. the finger. The finger. Did you people hear me when I was about plucking each of the things at home? No, we did not hear from that. No. So what exactly? Yeah, when did you stop? Somebody just tell me, like, say what I said. When you were actually naming the. You said that. that. You said. That. Joshua, you are saying something. You said that you should tell anybody around to help us unplug the strings. So, yeah, so you can mute now. Thank you so much. So, as I was saying, you should be able to identify each of the strings differently. And I was all the names of the strings and I was clicking them at random. And I was saying I would like to clock and so that you all would tell me, okay, this is string. You can say that to yourself. You don't need to own your mic. Click B, A, and E. B, A, and E, right? Anytime, any, anytime the network starts, display, somebody should just let you know. So this is what. Then, then this, and this one. Okay, what is this? What about this? D. Don't on your. Mic. Thank you. <laughs> Don't on your mic. Just say it to yourself. Okay. Just say it to yourself. So in case you don't have anybody, just unmute yourself. So in case you don't have anybody around you, this could help. Joshua, mute yourself in Jesus' name. You saw her that she was pregnant twice. So just put her in the pen. I, I will take you out of my class soon. Please unmute yourself. What was that? Responding to yourself. So if you got it, thank you. If you didn't, work on it, okay? So that being said, um, the next thing I think we should go into, um, okay, I'm going to give you some Boeing exercises. Yeah, I said that. But um, before Boeing exercises, let's talk about how to tune your instrument. So if you already have that app downloaded in your phone, okay? like I said, all these strings, they have particular alphabetical names. And in music, in music, Music is um, alphabetical also. Music is... So music deals with alphabet very well. So music alphabets are from your A to your G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So after a G, the next alphabet is A, not H, okay? After G, the next alphabet is what? A. Now music from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Let's say the first set, we can call them zero, 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 zero. More like you are climbing a staircase. And you know, music is all about going high and coming down. I can go, uh, I can see going high. But um, here now, I'm talking about alphabet. So when I go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay, I can still get another A. And that A we stand that is the last, the down one A, but the difference is just that they are in different octaves. Or they are they are different in different octaves, but like they are same notes or like same sound. So if I have my G, I'm coming. Let me just play it. Don't worry, just listen. G A B C D E F and G. So you saw I have G down here, 
and I have G up here. So how this works is you keep reading alphabet as you're going higher, as you're going higher. So you can either ascend or descend. But notwithstanding, when you have this alphabet, one thing you should have in mind is they are being numbered, okay? They are being numbered. You may not know the exact number of a particular one when you hear it with your ear, but they are being numbered. So let's take, for instance, the lowest one is zero. So they'll have A0, C0, E0, your video is hanging. Vincent, what? Vincent, can you hear me? No, still good. Let Let me come back. Confirm if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Now, the thing is, I have, since I left, came back, I have lost all the attendance. But what will happen is we are going to all drop our names, people that ended on WhatsApp. But you wait, let me write something. If you're in the class, please write your name. Or instead of that, send, ah, if I say send me your name in my DM, now my DM will fool. It's fine. Still write your name on the WhatsApp group, but not now. Until I ask you to write, then you can now write your name. So what is that? But that being said, you can hear me clearly. Sorry for all, all the um, network issues. What is to happen before this week on videos? I'm playing almost everything I'm seeing here on my YouTube channel. Okay, so everybody can go there and watch and grab everything I'm just saying. All right. So sorry. But that being said, um, how I'm just trying to explain how you tune your violin. And you people heard me when I said they are all numbered, alphabets are numbered. So from zero, you get one, from one, you get two. Did you hear me say that? Yes, I did. That was a respect. Yes. That so the more you climb higher, the more the number gets high, all right? And the change in pitch. This A is the same thing as that A up there, but it's just change in pitch. The other one is on a high pitch, and the other one is on a low pitch. So how we can now say this is all those ones in zero are zero, normal, okay? Then when you are on the the ones that have one, 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 you can call it first octave, second octave. Octave is a. I'm trying to break it down. Octave is more like eight complete notes. So if I have A, B. C, D, E, that's five. F and G. So seven notes makes an alphabet, uh, makes a musical alphabet. But if I now add the next one, which is the eighth note, this eighth note will be the same thing as the first one, which is A. So G, sorry, A, B, C, D, E, F, six, G, then A. So this A down here and this A are separated by different octave. All right, so I can call this one my normal. Then the next octave, the next alphabet I'm getting, which is on a high pitch, I can call it first octave. So let's take, for instance, if I'm playing on a particular key like A, this is my normal. So A, zero, E, zero, E, zero, e zero F, zero, G, zero. All right, so if this is G, zero, then the next A will be what? A, one. So everything from this A1 now will become one, 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 D1. So those are the first octave. 
So you have do, do, re, re, mi, and so on. Do, re, mi, and so on, right? Hope nobody is confused. I know why I'm saying all these things before I go into to me. Nobody is confused. Joe, um, is, is that Joshua who is raising up his hand? If you're raising up your hand, please ask your question. Okay, sir. Good evening, sir. Please, sir, can you recap about the Spanish I just did now? I didn't get that. All right. Now, let me say something. You've climbed a staircase before, right? Yes. I never had. So, it's more like you are climbing a staircase. And while climbing that staircase, I asked you for every step you make, count or call an alphabet. So, from A to G. Then, when you get to G, call another alphabet, A. Because after G in music, the next alphabet is what? A. I climb A, B, C, E, E, F, G. All right? Then the next alphabet will be what? A. So all these ones you've been climbing, they're on a lower staircase, right? So they're on a lower octave. So the next A, B, C, D will be counting forward. Do you get that now? So we can't, let me start again. A, lower, B, C, D, E, F, G. All these ones you've climbed, they are on a lower octave. So let's call those ones zero. All right? So when we are climbing to the next now, A, that becomes one. So we are on our first octave. D, C, all of them are having one. D, E, F, G, and what? A, another A again. So this A we are meeting will not be one again. It will become what? Two. So that's your what? Second octave. So it's more like when you read A, B, C, D to G, that's zero. You read another A, B, C, D to G, that's first octave, second octave, third octave. That's how you'll be reading the alphabet till you get to where the pitch is very, very high. Do you understand now? Confirm if you understand. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. So that's how music is being structured. If you look at your keyboard, when you start playing the... Keyboard starts from C. So the first C you're seeing, you still meet another C on the road. So that other C you are meeting becomes what? Another octave. So when we are playing, the lower one becomes, we just count it as zero. Then the next one becomes first octave, second octave, third octave, and so on. We understand. So when we are saying octave, octave is simply complete eight notes. Complete eight notes. So if you have your A and you're having your A up there, that's a complete eight notes. You have your G here, and you're having your G up there, or B, you're having your B up there. From this B to the other B is a complete eight notes, it's a complete octave, all right? So that being said, on your violin, this G hmm, is on your third octave, okay? It's on your third octave. So they would ask you, although no need to explain how you can get it on your keyboard. Sorry, someone is coming in. All right, sorry about that. Somebody came in. All right, so as I was saying, this is on your third octave. So we call this G3. G3, D4, A4, and E5. So this is 3, 4, 4, 5. 3, 4, 4, 5. So when you're tuning on your, um, maybe your digital tuner or anything, it will be writing those notes with, uh, it will be writing those alphabets with numbers. Okay, to be writing those alphabet with numbers to tell you if you are in G3 or you are in A2 or whatever. Okay, so what you will be looking out for is being able to get this G3, G3. So when you are doing it, you always see an analog hand that moves like this. So that analog hand has to be at the middle. All right, it has to be at the middle and it will shine green when it gets to that middle. That's for the ones that are analog. But this one I asked you to download, it will be dropping. It's on the middle, and you are on G, and it is correct. 
you understand now but i'm going to make a video separately from this though i did a video about how to turn the violin it's a particular app like that but i'm still going to do with this one it's more Is it Isabella or who? You have to bring down your hand now. What's her name? The person that asked your question, please bring down your hand now. Another person. It's not Isabella. What's her name? I'm not seeing her name. Good. Thank you. You've done it already. Esther. Esther. All right. Thank you so much. So that being said, now the next thing I'm going to be teaching you people, I was supposed to have done a whole lot of bowing exercise, but like I said, this thing is something you would have to put in your time and rehearse. So I'm going to give you ideas, then you go and rehearse them very well. All right. So I've told you how to bow already. So how to bow, it's like very, very easy. And I said, first thing, if I'm from my tip, when you are done doing that short, short bowing and you are now conversant with this place in your thing. Sorry, Muna Nove, my apologies. <laughs> Job came, so I had to take it. All right, so um, I taught people how to bow already, and I said for you to bow, if you've done your short bowing already and you're conversant with the spacing in between each of the strings, because the spacing in between the strings are very small. So you start going. So a few things you need to understand. A few things you need to understand. When we play, like, look at this bow. It is very straight on our... Um, Listen, when we play, we do what we call tilting of the bow. And that is, we bend it a bit. Are you seeing this? Because it is, it's more like the edge of our bow than when we play properly straight like this. Okay, so you have to just tilt, not bend. Like, I didn't say if you bend your bow like this till the stick starts touching the string. No, it's very wrong for the stick to touch the string. Only if you want to play, ah, what's that thing called? Is it, it's not Ponticello, there's what they call when you play with your uh, bow instead of your hair. All right? So I would get to find that again. So when you play bow, so you just tilt a bit. So it's more like, look at what your thumb is doing. You can try this exercise. Being able to roll, being able to roll your, your thumb. And you see what I'm doing now? And it's in where I can pull it in and being able to roll. So with this, you just, when it's straight, you just tilt it a bit. Are you seeing that? Very little, not too much. So you can get a clear bow. And when you're bowing, when you're bowing, um, bowing consists of, um, there's a, an equation for that. You should give equal pressure to force speed. Okay? The pressure you are adding on your violin should be equal to the speed you are giving to it. So look at this. Look at this. If I, I'm on my A, on my A string, I want to go very slow but I want to add as much pressure as possible. Are you seeing that? That is the kind of sound you'll get. Then if that same pressure, I want to move very fast, it gives a clean sound. You can try. Then if I want to play soft, if I want to play soft, if I go slow when playing soft, I'm not enjoying happiness. If I play slow when going soft, like it makes good sound. But if I go fast and I'm playing soft, like I'm not adding pressure, I'm playing it very fast. I would not have balance one, and my sound is not going to be clean. So, which is to say, when you are adding pressure, move your hands very fast, but not extremely fast. Like I said, it's supposed to be equal. So, what you have to do now, you can take a particular. Sorry, I, I need to use my mute so that I won't be too loud. Give me a second. Hold on, please. I'm coming. All right, so let's take, for instance, I'm playing on my D. Okay? Very soft. And I'm moving my hand, and I say, add extra pressure. And I told you, when you want to add pressure, what you add with your first finger. So this is the finger you press to add pressure. So start adding pressure. Get this crack you can now start with the new Are you seeing that? And I'm doing that with my middle bow. I'm doing that with my middle bow, okay? So 
add pressure, release pressure, add pressure, release pressure with same, with same speed first, with same speed. Then now try to make slower move, okay? And you start adding pressure and trying to equate the sound, sound play. So what, is, what you're doing is you add a little pressure and maintain that pressure. You won't press it too much. You start adding, adding, and moving your hand faster. So what I'm saying is, when you add a little pressure and you see the sound is looking upward, you start moving your hand a bit faster, okay? You add another pressure to sound upward, you start, so, so that you will know the kind of weight you should apply when you are playing each, um, maybe when you're bowing, rather. So the equal pressure should go with an equal speed. So which is to say, the faster you go, the more pressure. The slower you go, the softer the pressure. No confusion, but no confusion. If there's any confusion, somebody should just say something, please. All right, which means if I want to play soft, I have to move my bow very slow, like watch. Not did you see that I add more pressure and I'm still moving slow? That's why it's sounding that awkward. So if you are moving slow, no need to go fast. Like... Okay. That being said, let's not go into something more important. That means let's not go to something more important. There is something I would like you all to go and do and achieve before you come back for the next. And that is how, okay, which one should I give you first? Should I give you the alphabet first? Okay, good. Let's do alphabet first. Let's do alphabet first. Please pay close attention. We are very few in this class, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 people only. Wow. Out of the how many people that paid? <laughs> so help us God. All right. So see what I want to tell you now. Are you seeing the knot, right? Are you seeing the knot? For those that don't know, if I do anything, let me be plucking. I'm coming. I have to. I'm plucking on my G string, right? I'm coming. I'm not holding it. Well. I'm trying to hold so that you see. Okay. So I'm plucking on my G string. Okay. Anything I do behind here will not affect my sound until even on that knot, it will not affect the sound until I come after. Are you seeing that? Immediately after the knot, my sound starts changing. Okay? Immediately after the knot, my sound starts changing. So the more I go high. Are you seeing what is happening? So that's how sound change okay have that at the back of your mind so let's do alphabet musical alphabet so i would like us to be able to figure out where our alphabets are so if we can do these two things i have two things i want to teach you so we can just cover them up instead of me um waiting till tomorrow or the next class so that you can have a lot of things to rehearse for this week before the next week more people are still leaving the class i don't know why they're doing that this is why i didn't want to record the lessons so that if you miss my class, you have missed. You just have to ask fellow students to tell you. Because see, that is being recorded. I know, yeah, a lot of people can get busy at some point. But now we stand, let's just proceed. Now, this is your G, right? This is your G. The first thing is your G. Alphabet. First finger on G will be what? Somebody should tell me. Somebody that is just started learning. Somebody that just started learning. If you are here and you just started learning, I took you about your music alphabet, right? Said after G is what? Somebody hey. said, who is answering? Sunday. Okay, Sunday. You are new to the violin, right? Uh, not really. Okay, not really. I was saying somebody that is just starting, though. <laughs> but it's fine. So musical alphabet after your G is what? First finger will be what A. Right? Second finger will be what? B. You are just like your normal primary school alphabet, but just remember that after your G is always A. There is no H or I or J or K. All right? G. First finger will be what? A. Don't mind where I'm keeping my finger first. It's not a problem for you. Don't worry until 
that level you can fit semitones and full tones and it will be more easier for you. So G, first finger, A, second finger, B, third finger, C, fourth finger, E, body, fourth finger, D, sorry, what am I saying, D, let's read that again, G, first finger is what, A, second finger is what, B, C, D, right, D, no confusion, if there's any confusion, you can raise your hands while the class is going on, I will call you out, all right, so after D, the next thing is what, D, 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 D. so most times, your fourth finger will have the same alphabet with what, your D. As a beginner, if you're a professional here, don't say I said for now, just so that they would understand, okay? So we are apportioning one alphabet to each finger, all right? So G, first finger, A, second finger, B, third finger, C, fourth finger, D, or open string, D. So fourth finger and the open string have the same alphabet. Know that just for now, but the more you advance, things will change. After D, first finger is what? E. Second finger is what? F. Third finger is what? G. After G is what in music? A. So you see fourth finger A, and this is what? Your next string is what? A. Are you seeing that? Your next string is A, right? So it's just like the fourth finger is more like the same alphabet you get. That's how they named each of the strings. So let's say, for instance, we are not putting our fourth finger. Let's say, for instance, we are not putting our fourth finger. We go G, A, B, C, and what? D. Are you seeing that? That's why they gave this string the name string D. They are separated by fifths. Fifths, perfect fifths. So G, one, two, three, four, and five. So that's why they call it perfect fifths. Okay? After D, E, F, G, and what? A. After A, B, C, D, and what? E. Are you seeing that? That's why they gave the string the name E. After E, F. G, A, and what? B, with your fourth finger, okay? Sorry, I have to plug my power bank. Let me see how many percent my power bank is. Ah, two percent. This ring light is really eating my, it's really eating my battery. All right, let's see how far I believe this can still carry me. I just have 15 percent now, but now we stand. So you understand that I believe we all did. If you didn't get what I just said, raise your hand, or you just unmute yourself and say I should go again. It's more like you're reading your alphabet in your primary school. Okay, who is that? I'm seeing somebody. Glory. Okay, a lot of people are raising their hands, which means I should go. Somebody should un unmute. Should I say something? Should I go again? Should I go again? Just say yes. Yes. Again, he's listening very attentively. We are trying to find out the alphabet, musical alphabet on the violin. Okay, and I said for now, don't mind where my fingers are. Later, you get to know the exact point where those alphabets are. right? And I said, since I'm striking on my G string, then I'll go to my D, I'll go to my E, and I'll go to my E. I'm going to each of the strings. And I said, for you to know your alphabet, is simply, is simply knowing your normal A, B, C, D in your primary school. So if you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and I said in music, you don't have H, I, J, K, and so on. You just stop from G, and hence you see G. The next alphabet after G is A. The next alphabet after G in music is A. There is no H, I, J, K. Okay? So hence you see G. What's the next alphabet? A. You go to A immediately, then B, then C, then D, and so on. Then when you meet another G, the next alphabet is A. That being said, and I said, apportion each alphabet to one finger. So if open string is G, what will first finger be? A. Because after G in music is what? A. So we are placing each finger on the strings and we are giving them one alphabet at a time. Okay? After G is what? First finger will be what? A. Second finger will be what? Normal B. Third finger will be what? C. Fourth finger will be what? D. But I also said this D, which is your fourth finger, can also sound the same as what? Your open string D. Do you understand now? So G, if maybe this fourth finger, I'm not putting it. G, A, B, C. The next string is what? D. And that's why they gave this string the name string D. But if I add my fourth finger, G, A, B, C, and what? The same alphabet, D. I'm striking the two now. You see, they're sounding the same. 
So that is just it. And I say these things are separated by perfect fit. So if you count G as one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. Do you understand now? So we are just apportioning as to each of the finger G, first finger A, second finger B, third finger C, fourth finger D, or open string D. First finger on D string is what? E. Maybe what may be confusing you is the fourth finger D. It's normal alphabet. Now, if this is your D, this is your D. Okay? So the fourth finger will give you the same alphabet as your open string. After D is what? E, then F, then G, then A. Each finger, just be reading your alphabet. After G is what? A, or your open string A. And I told you, fourth finger will always give you what? The alphabet A. Yeah, the same alphabet as an open string. A, B, I'm touching the A string now. A string, B, C, D. If I put my fourth finger to give me E, or I play an open word, E. F, G, A, B. Is it clear now? Somebody should confirm if it is clear. The people that raise their hands, are they clear now? Is the reason to be sure? Is are you clear? What you you learn now. In the defeat, are you clear? Glory, are you clear? I'm not hearing you people. Or yes, am I sir. hanging? You are yes. clear now, right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So that being said, I would now want to play a game with you people. So I'll be calling some people out. I will drop my finger at a particular point and you will calculate it and tell me what alphabet my finger is on. Like I said, don't mind this. Even if I drop my third finger, just tell me what my third finger is. Okay? So these are the first thing you will do. Step one, what string am I talking about? Step two, what finger am I putting? Step three, if I should read from that open string, first finger will be what? Second finger will be what? Third finger will be what? And that should be what? The alphabet. What's happening to my Jimmy? Who is calling me now? That's the person I am. No, I don't. Hope I did not break. Hope my network did not break. No. no, sir. no. Good. So we'll be placing my fingers on each of these places and you'll be telling me what alphabet it is. So let me just give you an example. If I should drop my third finger on, what string is this? Um, well, hold on, let me call somebody. Glory is still up. Oh. Glory. Glory, is it Goma? Be, let, me, let me look at that son name again. Um, yeah, Gambo Glory. Uh, your hand is still up. Can you raise down your hand? Can you bring a uh, good? Now, see something, see something. Goma. Um, uh, sorry, Gambo, um, Glory, you answer this first. But I want you to understand, you'll be the first person. Now, see, this is what my third finger is on what string? What string is this, Go, um, Gambo? Sorry, I'm mixing your name. Glory. What string am I putting my finger on? G. This is my G, yeah, and this is my G. Okay. I say G. Okay. Okay, D. D, D, A, and what D. Okay. You can't remember for now. You can use book. But please don't see that. It's cracking. That, it's cracking. Is everybody getting that same issue? Sunday, am I cracking? It's clear now. Good. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. It's All right. Now. So please mute yourself back. Thank you. So now see something. See something. 
say something. If I, my third finger is on this point, step one is what? What string is my finger on? And it's what? E string, right? Good. Now, what finger am I placing on the string? My third, that's the second step. My third um, finger, right? Good. Now, how that is? If I want to know what alphabet my third finger will give me, what do I do? Check, this is first in D, right? First finger on D will be what? After D, normal A, B, C, D. After D is what? E. Second finger will be what? F. Fourth, third finger. Third finger will be what? Somebody should answer. G. 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 How do you get to understand this? Let's say, for instance, my fourth finger is on this A string. All right? My fourth finger is on the A string. How do I know? Step one. What string is that? Step okay. two, what finger is on it? My fourth finger. Step three, how should I calculate? First finger on the A string will be what? <laughs> finger will be what? C. Third finger will be what? D. Fourth finger will be what? E. So my finger is on the E alphabet. Do you understand? I will do it one more time. I'm trying to see if I can gets charger to just plug my phone to my power bank. So my power may be going down anytime soon because the power bank set is even low in the way. Although I charged it full for the ring lights has power a lot. I'm coming, give me a minute. Why are you not entering? Ah okay, sorry, my phone. All right, and we are. Hold on, I'm checking. Checking now. Okay, so let me do one more. My third finger is on my last string. My third finger is on my last string. Firstly, what is the name of that string? So we already know it's the third finger that is there now. So there is no need calling it even the second step. So okay, first one should be what finger is there? My third finger, right? I will be keeping my hand so that you see the one. My this is my fourth finger. So since my third finger is here, and this is on what string? E. First finger on E will be what? F. Second finger on yeah, okay. E. And the third one is what? E. Hey, so hey. That, that's calling people at random. Nobody should leave. If you leave, I will kick you out of my lesson for life. Just don't leave. Everybody. everybody. <laughs> for life. <laughs> If you move, you are fired. I will see it. So, 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 person left, and you'll be in trouble. <laughs> okay, Obi Nazi has joined. So, you see, if you are in good, I would leave. I would leave anytime. So, please do not leave. Somebody's neck is on. Who is that? Um, What's the person's name? Joshua, Joshua. This is the second time. Your mic is on. Turn off your mic, Joshua. Is he in this class? Good, thank you. All right, so I'm calling everybody at random. Krista Bell. Sorry if your mind skipped by hearing your name, but it's fine. I don't know who is who here at the moment, and I don't know who knows already. So, Krista Bell, I am placing my third finger. Okay, let me not do that. I'm placing my third finger on my G string. This is the G string. I'm helping you now to tell you the string already, and I'm telling you what finger is there. Christabel, can you tell me what alphabet my third finger is? Considering the fact that this is my G. If you fail, it is not a problem, okay? It is okay to yes, make sir. a mistake. So I think me. it's alphabet C. Well done. You did very, very Thanks, well. That's sir. the alphabet. Why? Because this is your G, right? First finger on G is what? A. Second finger on G is what? B. Third finger on G is what? C. Um, who again? Bode. B-O-D-E. I believe I pronounced that well. I'm placing my second finger. So I may be even asking some professionals here and I wouldn't know, but fine. Still answer me. I am placing my second finger on my what? Uh, uh, my last string, which is what? E. That's the E string. So this is my second finger. What alphabet am I placing it on? Bode, please. That's G. Good. Thank you so much. One more person. My favorite item goes up. 
My favorite thing goes like, I'm using fourth finger for you. <laughs> so I'm placing my fourth finger. I'm placing my fourth finger in my what string is this, please? D good on my D string. So since I'm placing my fourth finger on my D string, calculate it. I'm not going to give you any clue. Tell me what alphabet my finger is on. What should be the first finger? What should be the second finger? What should be the third finger? Eh? Why is it A? Yes, good. Now, sometimes I do this to my student and I make them feel they made mistakes so they will change the alphabet but you are correct 100 percent. thank you so so much that is that okay that is that so if you follow the well and you are not having any issues if there's anyone here that probably did not understand can you let me know please is there anyone here that doesn't understand somebody is raising their hand let me see hold on just give me a minute give me a minute oh, a lot of people are who Hold on, hold on, hold on. I so, I want, so I wasn't following at the first place. You were not following. Where should I start from yeah. now? Yes. I think you should start from that G3 stuff. Please. From where? The G string. G string. Yeah. In the closing time it's like you people did not look at the flyer before signing up because i know for every time i shared the this thing there's always i always specify the time i always specify all those things let me say it again okay seven, so, thank you not, not you not you i'm talking to the person i'm seeing his um comments seven to eight thirty p.m always Saturday and Friday only in the whole week. So that's why I'm packing a whole lot of things and giving it to you so that you can have a lot to review. So if you are not writing, I believe you have a computer brain so you'll be able to remember everything. All right. Mm, I'm to start from because I wanted us to do one more thing so that people have something to do before I leave. But let's see. Let's see. Please note. You know your musical. That should be good. Somebody's mic is on the mics. Is it Obi Naize? Obi Naize, if your mic is on, please turn it off. I won't be able to be going around and around and trying to find who is talking. All right, so that being said, thank you so much. Now, please listen very attentively. Let me just roll everything back. What we are simply doing is apportioning alphabets to each of the finger. Okay? So if this is G, your first finger on G will be A because after G in music is your A. So, ah, God. After G in your music, first finger is what? A. Second finger is what? B. We are reading A, B, C, D in primary school. Third finger is what? C. Fourth finger will give you D as same thing as your open string here. So anytime you see a fourth finger, it should give you same thing as your open string. For now, before you go and say, anytime you see fourth finger, it is it must sound the same as your point string. That's not true. I'm just giving you an idea, okay? So that you understand how the, this, I'm just doing like, like an anatomy I'm doing for you, breaking everything down to like this most simplest um, way. So let's take for instance, after D, first finger on D, these are your D strings. First finger will be what? A, B, C, D, E. So E should be the next alphabet, right? So your first finger should have the alphabet. F, next finger will be what? G, next finger will be what? A, as same as your open string, A. So first will always be the same alphabet as your A. First finger on E will be what? F. After your E, if you place first finger on your E, it should be what? F, G, A, and B. Do you understand that, please? Um, what's his name again? Uche David. Do you understand what I just said now? Yes, yes. Now, since you understand, 
since you understand that, what we were not doing is I was not placing my fingers at random for you to tell me what alphabet I am holding. So if I put third finger on my on this thing, hence you see it's already third finger you're seeing. So there's no need to call that um, maybe a step. So but first of all, consider what finger I'm putting on, and that's what my third <laughs> finger. What finger am I putting? Somebody's my okay. What I'm putting my finger on what my this finger is on what string? Is it? I mean, David. String, string A. This is on string A, which is my finger is on string A. So first finger, yeah. I want to know what my finger will be. So I will have to know what the first and the second finger will be before I will know where my finger is. Okay. So that being said, open string A. First finger on A will be what? Just because B. of it. B. Second finger will be what? C. Then third finger will be what? D. Alphabet D. Do you understand? I'm not hearing you again. Hello? Uh, uh, you hear? Did you hear what you just said? I'm hearing you, sir. <laughs> What are you him? Huh? Did you understand what I said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did. So that, okay, sir. Now, that is what we have been doing. You can mute now. You can mute. That is what we've been doing. So if I place my foot, you answer this one. You answer this one. So my foot is on the E string. My foot is on the E string. You already know this. So, we know what alphabet this is. You have to find out what the first string on E will be, what the second string, uh, finger on E will be, what the third finger on E will be, before you know what the fourth finger on E will be. So, tell me what alphabet. Which is David. That's B. Good. B. Okay. Sir, volume, please. Fine, you can mute yourself. That's B. So that is how you get to know the alphabet. You've done this with me, and if you congratulations, you now know where all your keys can be located, even if you don't know the exact place that you should move. So, um, I don't know what we do. I don't understand. From beginning again. What don't you understand, please? You don't understand how the how to get the alphabet on the strange. Okay. Um, I want to confirm something. First of all, let me know by what time did you join the class? The, the same. I can't hear her again. Her network is bad. Or is it my network? Is it my no, network? network? No, no, no. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Her network has hand. So what I think she should do, when this video is uploaded, you can go and watch it again and again and again. Okay? But can you hear me? But is it Fasanu? Fasanu, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. All right, we have to just proceed. So that being said, probably somebody should help me. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll talk to her directly. Okay, that being said, now the next thing to learn, this is step by step procedure. The next thing to now learn is we are exactly. No, 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 not that one. First of all, we have to do semitones. How to calculate our semitones and full tones? What are semitones and full tones? Semitones and full tones are just the spaces in between all these A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Some of them have very close spaces. Some of them have little spaces in between them. Okay. Sorry, I'm supposed to be looking at this. I did where my camera is, but I'm seeing my face here. <laughs> all right. So, um, alphabet, musical alphabet. What am I saying? What was I saying again? Sorry. I just skip something. So semitones and semitones and full tones. 
Semitones and phonetones are simply spaces in between alphabets. So semitone is a half step, and phonetone is a full step. I will explain that more. Don't worry. I will explain that more. Semitone can also be said. I can say semitone for violin. If I want to tell a violin, I'll say when you are observing semitone, don't leave any space in between your finger, which means your two fingers should be closed like this. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Just like they are married, so they are close to each other. Then when I say full tone, full tone means it's still a single bra and a single sister. So there should be space in between them, even when they are snapping pictures. <laughs> okay. Well, there should be space in them, if not, there is problem. All right. So, full tone. How does this do not have space, right? So what to do is how to calculate semitones. Okay, how to calculate our semitones and our food. Okay, how it semitones. Now, people have one how to how it. Your voice is breaking. Okay. Mr. Your voice is broken. Let me come, come back. You can hear me now, Abby? Yes, yes. Yes, loud. I have to leave and come back. Network is really crazy. All right, so I was talking about photos, and I said the only way I can do that message. Sorry about that. The only way I can convey this message to you to be able to, I can't say you and measure. So I won't be able to say that. So I have a particular way I teach students online, and they are able to catch it. Now, how I teach that is the size and um, the space. You know, um, who is that now? Obina. Obina. Huh? The mic is on. Let me mute you. Though. All right. Thank you. So as I was saying. This, um, I said full tone have space, right? Semitone don't have space. You, uh, you will get it later it's for the band that's asking for screen recording. Now, the size of um, the uh, uh, how is this? a semitone is the size of a finger, okay? For you to get a semitone smaller than like the finger, you understand that later. You understand that. Later. I'm just say a semitone is like the size of a finger. Just on, I'm saying one finger is a semitone. I'm rather saying the size of a, a finger is more like a semitone or a full tone. Don't worry. Let me explain what that is. Watch, 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 watch. Just don't be confused. Don't be confused. More people are leaving. Like I said, the class will end 8.30 on the dot. So I want to just gather a lot of things tell people what to do later. So see. Remember, I was trying to show you that everything we do around here on top of the knot will not make any different sound until we come immediately after the knot. So what you are going to do, I know sizes of fingers are different. Some people have big size of finger, like my own is a moderate size. But there are some people that their fingers are very small and that their fingers are very big, okay? But notwithstanding, 
very close to the knot, not like your finger is still touching the knot, just immediately after the knot, somewhere here, immediately after the knot. If you have a big finger like mine, that is not extremely big, okay, immediately after the knot is a semitone. So from an open string, you want to observe a semitone, I bring that finger close to the knot like this. Not It, it should not touch the knot. It's not touching the knot, just immediately after. Are you saying that that is a semitone? From an open string. If I drop the next finger very close to this other finger, leaving no space, leaving no space, this is another semitone. Semitone plus semitone is equal to what? Full tone. Do you see that? So when, okay, no problem. So semitone plus semitone is equal to what? Full tone. Are you seeing what I'm doing? Do you see the movement I'm making? I'm coming with that again. To observe the semitone from an open screen, you have to bring your first finger very close to the knot. Another way, another finger very close to the next finger. So if I want to observe a semitone from one finger, from the first finger, I will have to bring this other one close, leaving no space. Are you seeing? I'm not doing like this. The only people that would do like this is those, that, those ones that have little fingers. Their fingers are very tiny, especially our sisters, some of our sisters do. You want to get up maybe keep very close and you can. Just leave a little space after. And it's that. that's what people that have small. See the kind of I'm leaving. I'm not leaving space as big as this. A little space. So semitone or semitone is equal to what? Full tone. Because semitone is half. Full tone is complete. It's more like I have a stick of biscuit like this. One stick of biscuit is full. If I put this stick of biscuit into half, half is semitone. Is semitone. So to cut that semitone plus two is equal to what we see that. If you change this that was left, we can contain one finger. So to observe a two to have the eight point one two four. Let me cut um the first thing I want to cut um full tone here. So if yeah, first thing, they're very close to this point is a semitone. Are you seeing that? Next finger, bringing the third finger is another semitone. If I should remove this one, watch. The space you're seeing in between here that can occupy one finger is a full tone. From this point to this point is a full tone. So if you want to observe a full tone, you have to leave a space that can occupy one finger freely. The finger is not tight. It's not too loose. Just a space that can occupy a finger. Are you seeing that? Because that's where this one came out from. Why, if you want to observe a full tone, you have to leave it. If you want to observe a semitone, it has to be very close, right? It has to be very close. You just have like six minutes to go, eight minutes to go. So that being said, sorry, I'm too close. Maybe you only see my me very well. So from first thing again, semitone plus semitone is equal to what? Full tone, if I remove this one. Now, what you want to do, the exercise or the lesson or what I want you to do this week, Listen very attentively. What I want you to do this week, watch, is to be able to calculate semitone and full tone for each of the fingers. Semitone and full tone for each of the fingers. Semitone and full tone for each of the fingers. And you people are submitting it on Thursday. So you people are going to play each of them. Just find a way to tune your violin. Watch videos on YouTube how to tune the violin. Even if it's not a must, all lessons must come from me. Go and make your own personal research. This thing is not charging my phone. My phone is now 4%, even while I'm charging it. So go and make your own research on YouTube, how to tune your violin so that you'll be able to tune your violin very well. Now, I said the thing we want to achieve this night is being able to calculate semitone plus semitone equal to full tone. And then full tone for first finger, full tone for second finger, full tone for third finger, full tone for fourth finger. We are doing it even to the fourth finger. Or maybe semitone for fourth finger. Don't worry, forget that would explain more. Now, see. See it. Want to observe semi uh, full, want to find that full tone for first finger? We go semitone very close to the knot plus semitone is equal to what full tone. So I shift my first finger exactly so it's better to even plug it so that you'll be hearing it. Semitone plus semitone equal to what full tone. So the sound I'm getting is sounding as exactly when I played. Did you see that? So this is how I'll ask you to hold your violin and practice this. So it's not a must you would play, you can pluck. And to pluck, you don't 
around here. You don't plug close to the beach. It is it can give you a good block around the fingerboard like this. So what you do, your four fingers, your four fingers, put them under under your fingerboard like this. Like this. Okay? That's your right finger. And place it on your body. I'm trying to shift. This is how we hold. Place it on your body like this, more like you want to play guitar. So when you've placed your four fingers here on that, you can use this one to keep on top to hold it. Then you place it on your body like this. You see? You see? So it's flat. Now, when you've done that, you can now use this, your thumb, three, four, to pluck on each of the strings. Okay? We've done that. You start putting all things and saying that it will be, you'll be hearing what you're doing also. G. Semitone plus semitone. We are calculating for the first finger first. Somebody is sleeping. Deborah, are you, are you feeling tired? <laughs> G, semitone plus another semitone equal to full tone. So if I want to get the full tone for my first finger, my first finger has to come to me. Are you seeing that? So I've gotten my semitone for my first finger. I will start calculating semitone for second finger. So, I mean full tone. What am I saying? Don't mistake it. Full tone is when you are leaving space. I've gotten full tone for first finger. I want to get full tone for second finger, but I will have to calculate semitone and semitone first before I get full tone. Semitone plus semitone equals to full tone. Semitone plus semitone. So this this first finger semitone plus semitone equal to full tone. Are you seeing that? Okay, so I've gotten full tone for my second finger. I will try for my third finger. Semitone plus another semi. And when you are doing this, make sure your fingers are down. Don't raise your fingers up. Okay? Semitone plus another semitone. Equal to full tone. Now, why I'm saying you should do this for me, this is how I teach my students. This is how I teach my students. And I do that so that it will be easier for you to look and calculate it down. When you have gotten it and you've been able to, be cal to calculate it very well, if you pick it up like this, it will be more easy. That's what I think. That's my own philosophy. I'm not saying everybody should do it, okay? That's the best way I do it and all my online students are able to catch if I'm with you physically, to be an easier something. Even when I'm with you is, uh, physically, I still do the same thing because I see it as an easy hack. I see it as an easy hack. Even sometimes you play violin like that. When you want to play pizzicato, if you've watched um, David Garrett, there is this, you can type David Garrett, Tico Tico, T-I-C-O-T-I-C-O. -T -I -C -O. It's a piece he plays. He plucks with his finger. So you can watch that. Plucking with your finger is not wrong. It is called pizzicato. It's a technique on the violin, okay? So I want you to pluck this way. You can either pluck this way or you pluck this way. Different ways. It depends. If you want to keep it like this and be doing all those things I told you. Semitone plus semitone. Now when you want to pluck like this, I can't see that. I'll have to read that later. So when you want to pluck, you have to keep your thumb. If you're carrying that, you have to keep your thumb on the edge of your violin and you do your plucking. On the edge of the fingerboard, and you do your plucking on the fingerboard. Don't pluck yet. Watch. You see, this side sounds better than this side. So you can do that. Then you do all this exercise I'm saying about. I prefer like this. Then you can still keep it like this and do. Then you can still carry your bow and do it. All of them. I think I need to check that question. But let me finish. We have just one minute. We may not be able to finish this. We may not be able to finish this. But I'm going to drop. I'm going to drop a video I created. I'll drop a video on the group. Then all of you will go and practice it and send me my video. Everybody, everybody, before Friday, you may be disqualified. <laughs> I know you've paid, but oh, you may be disqualified and you will not get the certificate. You can still go through the class and you will not get the certificate. All right? So, so let me come again. Ah, I don't think I can finish this reading. Okay, you know what? I don't want to keep us more than our time. I like keeping to time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to send a video talking about this on the group. I'm going to send a video talking about this so you guys should go and work on it very well. Thank you so much. You can ask a question. Let me check for please.
Let me check for questions. Let me check for questions. Mm. Please, can we get a screen? Okay, this one says, please, sir, why should we hold? The okay, I've answered, I've answered that question. Then this one, sir, I am lost on the calculation. You are lost on the calculation. So it is fine. Any other question? Any other question? Don't worry, I'm going to drop a video explaining this more. I'm going to drop a video explaining this more. So don't worry. Don't worry. Like I said, if your fingers are smaller or tinier, your spacing will be different. That is called a mute. The, the black stuff I dropped on my violin, I put on my violin, is called a mute. Mute, M-U-T-E. What it does, it, it dampens or reduces my sound so that my violin will be extremely loud. This is night. So I don't want to disturb people and they're shooting movie upstairs. So there is no how I can be playing my violin very loud. It's going to enter into the recording, okay? So when you use mute, for those that want to rehearse, when you use mute, it makes your... If people can see me because this thing is already dying, I want to all this. You can still see me, right? Yeah, you can still see me. So, so that I can unplug my phone. I don't want my phone to die. And I just have one bar on my power bank. All right? You can still see me, right? As I was saying, as I was saying, what was I even saying again? Sorry. <laughs> A lot of things on my head now. <laughs> Somebody should Bad remind me of about the yeah. mute. Good. About the mute. The mute. mute reduces your sound so that you won't be stopped. Say the try, keep it up. Sir? I have just one yes. question. Can I go now, please? Yes. Okay, sir, you can. Bye bye, thank you. I dropped a question there. Please let me answer the question. Maybe they can say. I dropped a question by the info chat. Please, you can, when you have battery, you can please help us. When I have when your battery is full, maybe when you charge your phone, you can please answer the question. Good morning. Good morning. I think you said you have some you have to call that you sorry about that, please. Are they are you with me? I'm with you, I'm with you. I what you said again, I didn't yeah, I, I said you. I dropped a question. On the chat, please. When your battery is full, can please answer the question. Okay, so this is um. Okay, please. Uh, how many full tones can we get on a string? Oh, oh more. Me myself, I don't even know. <laughs> now, if you're asking me how many full tones can we get in a particular key, it is a different thing. Maybe we are playing on a, a key, maybe like G major. Uh, they will, that's when we'll start knowing how many flats, uh, how many full tone and how many semitone are there. Okay. okay, but saying in general, it is not known because you can observe your full tone from any angle, from anywhere. You can observe your semitone from anywhere. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So if you want to observe your full tone or your semitone from your first finger, it's fine. If you want to observe your full tone or semitone from your second finger, you can do that. You understand? So they don't have how many. It's when we are not playing on pay, a key. Maybe you are playing on a particular key. You ask me in key G major, G major, how many flats and how many sharps do we have? I will tell you, okay, we have, um, sorry, how many full tones and how many semitones? I will not tell you, okay, in your G major, between your G, your A, and your B, they have full, full tones. Then between your E and so on, I will just tell okay, you that this is that. Like, the major keys for major keys semitone occurs between third and fourth, seventh and eighth, or mi fa ti do if you are used to by full tone. So you can go and count all those other full tones and just leave two semitones that are there. Thank so you, you thank get thank you very much. Thank you, I get thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we would still cover a whole lot of things on this. As we progress, you will get to understand more. As we progress, you understand more. 
So thank you so much. Any other question, please? Any other question before we go? A lot of people have left, Seth. Don't forget to send the video. I won't be the one to send the video. Ngoza, are you still here? Ngoza, confirm if you are still here, please. Ngoza. All right. Thank you so much. So what you are going to do, try to see how you can compress the video. Try to see how you can compress the video. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think somebody um, suggested like two to three apps on the WhatsApp group. Check it out. Somebody even suggested a new one. Okay, you know what? People, if you know any good compressing app that can still retain quality of the video and reduce the size, somebody should just post that on WhatsApp for her. All right, so that's that you can stop the recording. You can stop the recording. Thank you so, so much. So that's one sacrifice you'll be paying for us in Goza. Please. <laughs> 